do not particularly like newspapers. They're altogether too much paper and too little news. I imagine when they first began, the ratio was reasonable. But these days, not even a St. Bernard can carry in the Sunday paper. It is so thick that I must begin my morning sorting. Filtering through racing guides from Kentucky, leaflets selling furniture from Sweden, and competitions promising that I'll be the one chosen to go to Tijuana. Now, as keen as I am to find out if people there ever do eat barbecued iguana, I'd trade in that prize to wake up one morning to a newspaper containing only news. With the sorting complete and my fingers already blackened, I can finally begin. My eyes scan the pages, hungry for news. They dart amongst the blocks of text. Neat rows of words, line upon line, marching across each page like well-trained soldiers, devoid of personality, tailored to fit precisely in that box, that cold, allocated allotment of space. It does not matter that that woman, who is here reported to have been mugged on Sunday morning at precisely 8.05am, is the mother of a boy named Arthur. She's only worth 3 centimetres by 4.5 centimetres of space. The fact that five-year-old Arthur loves to check the mail every day, mainly to see how many snails have been chewing away at the tasty letters, and loves to paint things bright orange and blue, are not mentioned at all. And yet, I find those things fascinating. They are news to me. I understand that newspapers cannot include all of those things, for they are infinite. And newspapers are there to tell us the things that are most important. But of what I would like to know is when we all agreed that Arthur was not important, while the man who mugged his mother is. Thank you.